let us keep continuing to read the gospel in terms of the positivity of God's grace. In the past few weeks, this has been our power to discover between the lines the positivity, the strength, the hope which Jesus brings to his disciples and to us. The parable of the sower at its faith's faith, face value is about faith. How important it is to keep our faith alive as a community and as individuals. How can we or why should really we make an effort to safeguard our faith as there are many dangers which can weaken or extinguish faith in God. In the past few weeks or months by now, it was part of our community spiritual life to go home and read our homework parish catechism, which was usually at the back of our mass paper. It was about the Eucharist in the past weeks uh, and then about penance. All this in the service of restoring a positive and active faith in us and in our community. That's why we are using that prayer of public confession of our sins, which is a bit more detailed. It required a bit more effort than rushing through routinely uh, at the penance at the beginning of the Mass. We will learn about private exercises, how to make our personal confession to Jesus. Not so much, not explicitly as part of the using the sacrament, because most of us are not familiar with it, but as a first step to talk face to face to Jesus about it. However, there is a second level to our parable and we, we can read it in terms of our actions. Today's Gospel sets out a positive program, but with a sobering warning. These are life options for us, for everyone, how we use God's grace, God's life in one's life. And this happens to all of us and to people. Some seeds fell on the edge of the path and the birds came and ate them up. Others fell on patches of rock where they found little soil and sprang up straight away. Others fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Others fell on rich soil and produced their crop, some hundredfold, some thirty, some sixty. The real focus, and it is actually a double focus, is the fourth option, when the seed succeeds. When God's work is working in our lives. But also important is the sower, God's work and friendship in our life. This relationship and continuous partnership is called spiritual life. This guarantees that through prayer, through spiritual readings, reading things which nourish our soul, the Bible or about our faith, about the sacraments, the life of the saints. It is through the spiritual life that we bear fruit and we avoid all the other options. Journeying together with the Lord is the key. And here I would like to quote Pope Francis's homily, uh, told on the feast of St. Paul and St. Peter. I'm just highlighting what he says of St. Peter's confession, because this sums up the story of the good seed, 
This sums up our own story when we bear a good seed. When the Son of God, the sower, asked Peter, who do you say that I am? To this important question, Peter answered this. And in other words, what Jesus asked was, who I am for you? Who is Jesus for me? Who is Jesus in my life? Peter's answer can be summed up in one word, follow. Peter knew what it was to follow the Lord. He responded to Jesus' question with a fine profession of faith. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And this is the beginning of the journey of the good seed as Christians. This answer, this initial answer, was an impeccable, precise, exact, we could even say perfect catechism answer. You are the Son, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Yet, this answer was itself the fruit of a journey, the journey of the good seed. For only after the thrilling experience of following the Lord, walking with him and behind him for some time, for three years, did Peter arrive at this maturity that brought him to this confession. Another important moment in the life of the fruitful seed is how Peter's growth, like the positive growth of all of us, began. In our illustration, we can have a closer look at the image, the Savior's hand. When the seed is leaving his palm of hand and is about to fall on the good ground, All of us has a similar story. One day, when beside the Sea of Galilee Jesus walked by, called Peter and his brother Andrew, and immediately they left their nets and followed him. Just as immediately the good seed is falling on the ground. Immediately. Peter's whole life its fruits tell us that it is not enough to respond to the question who is Jesus for me with a faultless formula. Words are not enough, no. It is only by following the Lord that we come to know him each day. Only by becoming his disciples and listening to his words that we become his friends and experience his transforming love. This is the life of the seed, confession and act. We are to learn everything day by day as a disciple, a follower of Jesus, walking in his footsteps. This is the decision of journeying with the Lord which will generate the positivity of the Gospels around us and among us. And this positivity is so desperately needed. It is vital for us also as a society, as a local community, to follow the Lord as the good seed. It has huge and practical implications for society, even politics. Everything, the quality of life, 
the quality of living in our local community depends on imitating the life pattern and the efforts of the good seed, Peter's journey. Without it, society will end up in a loophole of chasing its own shadows, which are growing shadows. Let me share with you at the end something which, is, which seemingly is not part of the Gospel, but last week's experience. Within five days, there were two huge fly tippings just in front of uh, the house where I live. CCTV camera recorded it. Obviously, there were some local people packing a small van, unpacking it, 10.30 a.m. in the morning, the other 3.30 in the afternoon, on a hired van full of, full of stuff, just dumped, even uh, pushed through the grills of the, of the fence. As a good citizen, I reported it to the council and to the police. I uploaded the CCTV evidence with clear faces, number plates. Then I received the call from the Metropolitan Police, apologetic, that, dear sir, we received your um, uh, report, but you know, we are so outstretched. We have no energy and resources for these minor things. If it happens again by the same person, we might look into this. The council was never back to me. Good luck, Labour. Good luck. Sorry for that remark. I drew, and then, uh, uh, then uh, uh, I had a conversation with a member of our community uh, who was abused at the tube station. Uh, the word is... Uh, uh, fair dodging, jumping through the fence, when you are passing through the gate, someone is pushing you and uh, uh, making the escape. And then the realization come that today's parable of the good seed with the four options is really vital because the police, the government, labor, Lib Dems, whoever, God knows them, uh, they live on the, in the saddle of the horse in the wrong way, looking towards the back of the horse. Look how wrong their emphasis is. They say, we don't deal with minor crimes. We have no resources. Our task is to do the good thing and to focus on big things, on big crime. Totally, totally wrong and waste of money. If we want to make a change in society, in our life, and that's why my emphasis is on repentance and confessing our sins in order to love freely. If we want to make our streets livable, we should start with the minor things. If the police forget about the big dogs, if they invested all their resources and energies on minor crimes, teeny tiny shoplifting, minor antisocial behavior, fly tipping, littering, um, teeny tiny small things, but all the time, and explaining why they are doing it and what's the consequence if people continue like this. Then we would build up a climate at local level that people would feel their boundaries. They could have the sense when they start living the, the story of the bad seed, falling on bad ground, losing life. The solution is so simple. It wouldn't cost a penny. Just policemen, instead of developing their big belly, becoming obese ladies and men, and God knows what gender they are, you know, when they go in Beaufort Park, 11 o'clock, a pilgrimage, growing bellies, you know, even a toddler runs faster than them. But anyhow, it's a good thing. They need the big belly. Just be on our streets, talk to people, chase minor crime. You don't have to uh, run fast. 
That would be a big change. But back to our gospel. The stakes are high. The task is simple. But everything depends on that. We can generate this climate of positive living. So, let us ask the same question while having a look at the hands of our Savior. Who is Jesus for me? What can I do to turn the world's logic of chasing its shadows around? What can we do together as a worshipping community to make the positivity of the Gospels known? So let us grow. Let us grow.